One thing I just love is cooking over a fire, whether it be on top of the wood stove here in the Pungo Prairie Saloon or on an open campfire like Tally Girl and I did in the mountains this past fall. Tally Girl, you want to share with the people our recipe for campfire Brunswick stew like we made for the folks coming in for the day before Thanksgiving? Sure, Daddy. That's okay with me. Okay, y'all. Tally Girl says it's okay. So if you want to see how we make our campfire Brunswick stew, don't go nowhere because you don't want to miss this. Now initially, I had planned to fix up this stew tomorrow, Wednesday before Thanksgiving, because that's when we're going to have it, tomorrow evening. But they're calling for rain and high gusty winds up to 45, 50 miles an hour tomorrow, so I didn't think that would be very conducive for cooking up a Brunswick stew over an open campfire like this. I reckon it's going to keep just fine, so we're going on with it today. I got our pot all heated up here over the fire with a little bit of olive oil in it. I'm just going to brown up our chicken a little bit, starting breast side down. Now normally when I make Brunswick stew over the campfire like this, I like to use for my protein things such as squirrel, rabbit, possum, venison, and wild ducks. Well, I got a couple Yankee cousins coming in from Youngstown, Ohio. My mother, my 92 year old mother, my sister who is a real diva, and my nephew. So instead this time, I'm just gonna go with some chicken and some pulled pork. For my pulled pork in my Brunswick stew, I like to use something like a Boston butt. Being out here in the mountains like I am, I had to drive it eight miles into Craigsville to the IGA, and all they had were these cut up country style ribs. So I got them all seasoned up here with some Pungo Prairie pit powder and I tied them up and bound them together in a nice little bundle with some jute. Well, normally when I bundle up meat like that, I like to use a cotton butcher's twine, but they didn't have any at the Dollar General in Goshen, but they did have this little roll of jute twine. It says right here, natural fibers, all purpose for crafts, gardening, bundling, macrame, etc. Well, we're bundling. I bundled up all them little country style ribs with it. Heck, I don't reckon it'll kill nobody, but there is a caution. These light cordage products are designed for use that could not result in injury. Hey, it doesn't say nothing about death, so we're going with it. All right, I got a nice little bundle of coals going here off to one side of our little smoker. I'm just going to go with a few pieces of this oak I split up from those end cut railroad ties that I got from up at the creosote plant there where they where they make those uh, railroad ties. And that's what we're going to use for our fire spice. I'm just going to go on with our little bundle of country style ribs there that I got all seasoned up with my Pungo Prairie pit powder aka butt, belly, and breast rub. Let it smoke. Oh yeah, got a nice little smoking going on them pork ribs now. Now the reason I like to brown the chicken up a little bit before I put the water in there and start boiling it, I think it gives our stew a little bit more roasted kind of robust flavor. Now if you don't want to do that, you just want to boil it and it not be as good as mine, just go ahead and just boil it. Okay, now that we got a nice light golden brown going on our chicken. I've got a pot of water here I've had heating up on the wood stove. And we're just going to add hot water right there to our pot. Put the lid on it. And I'm going to take our pot off just for a second. You take a link off our chain so I can get the pot a little bit higher away from that fire. Now we wanted to get our pot a little bit higher up off of that fire because we don't want like a rapid boil going on. We want more like a gentle simmer and we're just going to let our chicken simmer there in that pot 
for maybe 45 minutes to an hour or so we're going to check it we don't want to you know just suck all the ju juice out of it i want it so i can pull it apart but i don't want it to be falling apart oh yeah our roast our rib roast literally is a rib roast made a roast made up of ribs <laughs> it's smoking up nicely there let me put maybe just a couple more of these wood chunks on there. Our chicken has been simmering there in that pot for a little bit over an hour. And I think it's just about right to pull out of there. Pull it out of there. Set it right here in this little, uh-oh, we lost a leg. When it does that, you know it's right. <laughs> That's all right, we're gonna get it right here. And we're just gonna set our chicken right down there on that stump and let it cool a bit before we start picking it apart. Now we got our nice chicken stock right here in our pot, but we're gonna have to take it out of the pot for just a little bit, transfer it to another pot, and here's the reason why. Now this pot is heavy. So you got to be careful with this exercise because we don't want to spill it. And notice how there's a little pouring spout right there. And that makes it easy to dump our chicken stock right there into this other pot. Let me get it all out of there. Okay, I'm going to add another link. Get our pot a little closer to our fire. We've diced up about six or seven ounces of some salt pork. And we want to saute that up in that skillet or that pot. Now you know a good old southern recipe like a Brunswick stew, it's got to have some salt pork going in it. Crank up the heat here just a little bit. Okay, now our bundled up pork ribs have been on that smoker for about three hours. I'm just going to put it down here on this tin foil and bundle it up. I got two layers, nice and tight. This is what we call crutching it. And for expedience sake, I'm going to put it right here in our little Camp Chef oven. So we already got fired off and we're just going to let it continue to cook there in a little camp oven get that temperature up to like 195 200 degrees internal temperature so that pork will pull apart nice that collagen will break down and we've already got enough smoke flavor going on in it right now all we're looking for is the heat our salt pork round up nice i'm gonna add about two-thirds of a stick of butter here let that melt in our pot. Right here, I've diced up about one and a half Vidalia onions. I'll saute them around in there. Now, not everybody uses them, but I like them in my Brunswick stew. I've diced up a couple potatoes. And I've minced up five cloves of garlic here. Get that kind of sauteing up in there. Right here, I'm going to add about a quarter cup of some brown sugar. I'm going to stir that. We can adjust the sweetness as we go, so I don't want too much to start with. Some Worcestershire sauce. Maybe a tablespoon or so. About a cup of some barbecue sauce. Now we're going in with... A little bit of cayenne pepper, not too heavy. I don't want it too spicy. You can always add more. And then one, two cans of fire roasted diced tomatoes. Rinse our can out with a little bit of our chicken stock. That's two. And then right back in our pot with our chicken stock that I've been keeping warm in there on the wood stove. And I'm just going to let that 
cook open without the lid on it for a little while and kind of reduce down. Our chicken's cold off nice. I'm just gonna start pulling our chicken meat apart. This is no fun when it's still hot. And I'm gonna save these bones and I'm gonna show you why here in a minute. See, it's not like pulling real free. That's because I don't want it overcooked chicken because it's going back in our stew to finish the cooking process. It's nice breast meat. Now we got all our nice chicken meat pulled off of the carcass and I'm going to shred that up in a few minutes but right now I'm going to show you what I did with a little bit of that reserve stock that I didn't add to the pot. I added our bones to this little saucepan with some of the liquid from our big iron pot and I'm going to put this on a little camp stove and boil those bones and get every last bit of chicken's essence, essence of chicken flavor out of there I can. Now you know you're going to get you some easy, easy, easy. All right. Yeah, I got some more easy. Yeah, this all skinny. Give me some meat. Here's some meat. <laughs> A little bit more. Daddy, how come it don't have no lima beans in it? And corn, she paid corn. That's coming, baby. That's coming. Alright. Stock is cooked down nice. Been simmering there for about an hour and a half. Now, I'm going to add our shredded up chicken into the pot. Alright, stir our nice shredded up chicken meat in there okay I got our smoked pork out of the oven got a nice internal temperature there holding about 205 what I want to do right here is get all of that little hemp twine off of there that I tied it up with because I don't I don't want anybody getting hemp poison. Actually, it wasn't hemp. It was jute, wasn't it? I forgot jute. That's right. We don't want nobody getting high off of Brunswick stew. All right. Let's see if we can pull this apart a little bit. I've used my fingers, but it's still hot. It's a little drier than butt would have been. I think these ribs came off of a loin, tell you the truth. Okay, our pork's all pulled apart nice and right on in to our pot. Some stew getting happy now. Susie? Bill? You sneaking out of the bushes scared the crap out of me. <laughs> My little Yankee cousin Susie. Well, Bill really refers to me as his cute little Yankee cousin from Ohio. Actually, she's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. <laughs> anyway, I want to tell Bill, we do not cook this way in Ohio. You don't? How do you cook? We cook indoors, Bill. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> well, it's been fun for a long time, but this is really interesting. Well, it is. It's going to even be more interesting here in a few minutes when I put some shoe pay corn and some baby llama beans in here. Well, I can't wait. In a few minutes, we're going to go up there and have that Italian feast at the cabin I fixed up for y'all on Sunday. Probably won't be as good as you and Dave do, but we got that little bowl and yeast going on. And we got to get this pot simmering here, get this finished up, and then we're going to eat Italian. Now I know why we don't, why we cook indoors, Bill. My eyes are watering from the smoke. Oh, that's from the cayenne pepper in the pot. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> We're like tearing. Come here, baby. <laughs> Love you. Love you too, Bill. We're kissing cousins. I don't know if I should say that on camera. No tongue, no. <laughs> Dave will die when he sees that. All right, in goes about 12 ounces of some baby llama beans and about 12 ounces of a mix of shoe peg and some whole kernel yellow corn because they didn't have enough shoe peg by itself. Kelly. I didn't tell you to lick that bowl. Now it's looking a little bit thick, but that's okay because I planned for that. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about here in a second. Callie, 
Nobody said you could lick the bowl yet. Well, Daddy, you didn't tell me I couldn't. All right, remember that stock we saved and we cooked with them bones in it? I'm just gonna add that in there. Try to get it all out. It's nice and rich now. And last but not least, some of my world famous Pungo Prairie Piggy Perfume, AKA South Sauce. It's the vinegar and the peppers that uh, South Down pulled pork. You gotta have that vinegar going on in that stew. Make it piquant. Yep, a little bit piquant. Y'all didn't know Redneck's new French now, did you? Now I'm just gonna let this pot of Brunswick stew set over this campfire on that hook on this tripod for about a couple hours and just kind of let it slow simmer. We got the chicken and the pork and the butter beans, the choupé corn, the five roasted tomatoes, the garlic, the potatoes, the salt pork. Mm. Oh my goodness. This ain't gonna suck y'all. The only thing we're missing now is a wooden paddle to stir it with. All right, let's see what we got here. That is a full pot of Brunswick stew. A little bit of iron skillet cornbread to go with this campfire Brunswick stew. It's gonna be right on time. Jesse made up a good looking pasta salad there. Well, I tried. How about that, a little bit of, get a little bit of that fresh basil and sprinkle it on top. You know, Uncle Bill, I was sitting here thinking the that same I thing. That I it up. Well, I wish you would have chef and it, but we'll take the chef and any day. <laughs> hey. Is that out of your garden, Uncle Bill? Because it smells yes, delightful. It no, I grew it in the tent. Oh. Robin, how long did it take you to fry that chicken? Not Was too it? long. <laughs> the beans don't burn on the bread. Justin, did you get your keys locked out of your truck yet? I don't want to talk about <laughs> Oh my gosh. What a no locksmiths out here, buddy. No papa locks. No, we're going to have to do something. I have to break the window. I got a five pound ball down there. The oysters are locked in there? No. Houston, we have a problem. Cousin Dave. Hello? You made it all the way out of the mountain tonight and I didn't have to come look for you for yes, two hours. Yes, because I left 15 minutes earlier and I marked the ta ta trail all the way down. What did you do? Pee on trees? Or what? <laughs> yes, I did. Kept off that thing going, that's me. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Yeah, today? I didn't know you were up there. Yes, I got it Gee. yesterday. <laughs> Mom. The lollipop kid. <laughs> A really big one. Mom, do you, like, do you like Brunswick stew? You? Do you like Brunswick stew? Do you like Brunswick stew? I ate it a bowl. Oh, I love it. We made it with, Mom, we made it with squirrel, rabbit, and duck. Oh, I don't think I'll have any. <laughs> so, Cousin Susan. Yes, talk to me and Robin. Where's the lollipop? If that's not too deep, it's right there now. I've never seen any. No, well, I've been in the woods a couple days. We're just kind of deep now. <laughs> what does that shirt say? K -K oh, KKT. What does that mean? Kalpa? It's no, Kappa. Kappa Gamma. Oh. All right, and what is that? It's my sorority. Oh, is that like Young Life? No. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here, baby. Baby. Lexi, her name is Lexi, and she's, she's the second lady. born <laughs> in her family, and she's named after Lexington, Virginia. Is that right? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. I like oh, the way that Julianne, that zucchini in that pasta salad. That's pretty good. Cool. I used one of your knives, Uncle Bill. Yep. The last one down, salad. they have to do the blessing. Hope it tastes good. Cousin Brucey? Yes, sir. Who's saying blessing tonight? Lexi. Lexi. Okay, we'll make... Dave said it last night. Jesse does a good blessing. All right, we'll do Everybody grab a hand. Jesse. All right, All right Jesse, I'm down to four minutes on the battery. Okay, everybody. <laughs> Tonight is the night of Thanksgiving Eve. Let's pray. <laughs> Lord, thank you for everybody that's in this circle tonight. Lord, thank you for everybody that's not in the circle here with us tonight. Be with them. Be with us. We all come to the circle with problems, issues, maybe deep thoughts that we're thinking about our blessings thank you for family 
Thank you for the love that you gave me to put in that pasta salad, Lord. Let it shine bright like a diamond over that Brunswick stew. In Lord's name I pray. Amen. 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 I want to thank the Lord for Bruce Sr. who put all this thing together years ago. I'm sure that he would just love what we're doing down here now. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Uncle Bruce. Amen. All right, okay. all right let's just spin her us. up. Yeah. We, I have no Thank you. Can I have a little spoon over here? Yes, ma'am. I'm bringing it to you right now. Okay. Yeah. Brunswick stew being cooked over the campfire for 14 hours. Actually, high I think it's been about nine. On high heat. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was high when you went down there and put his extra logs on the fire and it was boiling over into it. I didn't know any better. Hey, cooking on a campfire tastes finesse, Justin. I'm, I'm learning. There you go. <laughs> and it's Thanksgiving cool. Eve at the cabin. It's just, you're the uh, here yeah. alongside Brighton. Oh, what? Okay. It's great to have the family gathering together here once again at the cabin for another Thanksgiving celebration. There will be a lot going on tomorrow as everyone prepares their own contribution to the feast. This year our expected group will be a bit smaller than usual. I think around 30 or so. There's forecast to be a lot of wind moving in overnight. I just pray it gets out of here before tomorrow evening's planned bonfire. In any event, we are thankful just to be here. Jesse's pasta salad was delicious. And that Brunswick stew was pretty good too. <laughs>